Uh, I grew up in North Dakota. I'm a farm girl. And that you're going to understand why I have the prairie and the Mediterranean diet here. So you really get that completely. Grew up on a farm. There were seven children. I have four older brothers. Well, sister is the oldest. Four brothers, me, and then a younger brother. So I have a lot, lot of brothers. And they tell you there's something that you've probably heard this before. It's like growing up with five brothers. You know, it's what's that what saying? If uh, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? <laughs> so that's what it was like growing up with five brothers on the farm. But um, in, you know, I really gained my love of food and cooking in that farm kitchen. And it was such a little inadequate kitchen when I think about how did we do that? And that little kitchen produced all that food, you know, we, we were self-sustaining. It's the kind of food and culinary approaches that everybody yearns for today, right? Like fresh farm food right off the farm. Um, so that led to my career in nutrition and dietetics. I got a bachelor's degree and then a master's in nutrition and then uh, went on to an internship. And then my first job was that uh, was in the Air Force. Uh, so I'm a veteran of the Air Force, and uh, so that was also a great, wonderful experience for me. But I just really, I worked in all kinds of settings. I worked in long-term care. Um, I was a public health nutritionist working with women's infants and children's programs. So I tell people I have womb-to-tomb experience, okay? So <laughs> that covers it right there. Uh, so my last, my last um, uh, work, uh, Environment was, I was the head dietitian at a cardiovascular hospital in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And that's where I became very interested in the Mediterranean diet. Because when I started at the hospital in 2001, the diet that was being promoted at the time was the low fat, low cholesterol diet. But I've been reading research starting in the mid uh, 90s about how, because people had lowered their fat intake, they had boosted up their carbohydrate intake, and the food companies latched onto that. They were smart, man. So they promoted all of this fat-free packaged foods. Do you remember that? You pick up the Sharon's body, you pick up the package. Ooh, low-fat cookies, low-fat crackers, all this, you know, processed food. Well, you know, that approach approach didn't work. And we were finding that out by the by the you know by the early 2000s. But I thought, okay, I'm going to have to be smart about this because I have to be the specialist. Everybody's going to look to me. So what I did was I went to a website called PubMed. I want you to write that down. I shouldn't have it. I think I have it on one of my slides. Paul, P as in Paul, U, B as in boy, M as in Mary, E, D as in dog, PubMed.gov. It is a database of all the peer-reviewed research from around the world that is hosted and maintained by the National Institutes of Health. So this one you're gonna learn through my classes and you're gonna hear me say, go to pubmed.gov. Because how many of you believe everything on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. And that's the issue, lots of opinion and you're gonna learn too is that a lot of people are promoting themselves as experts in nutrition, which really are very good at marketing, but no nutrition background. So you have to, if you go to PubMed, it's, it's, a, it's public, right? So you can go there, do your own research. Uh, what is a Mediterranean diet? We're gonna go uh, talk about what the foods are and what is the science. So let's get started. Okay, so really what is the Mediterranean diet? Uh, the Mediterranean diet is not a single diet prescribed, not a single prescribed diet in a sense. It's a general food-based eating pattern. It's, this is not like a diet like you go on a diet type of diet. This is a general eating pattern. This, what's great about the Mediterranean diet, no matter if you're two or 82, this is a really awesome wholesome diet that anybody can eat at any age. Uh, and then it also um, incorporates local and cultural dietary preference throughout the Mediterranean region. So basically the Mediterranean diet originates in the countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so that's a lot of countries, isn't it? So any of you, many of you have traveled to these countries and you've experienced the food culture in these countries. And you know that the Mediterranean diet of Italy, well, we found the Mediterranean diet of Italy varied significantly from the Mediterranean diet of Sicily. 
um, you know, just that close. And uh, Greece, um, and you look over here and you go over to, like, you would think of Syria, right, as being Mediterranean. You think Middle Eastern and Mediterranean really kind of, there's a lot of similar components, mm -hmm. right? And then we have Israel is in there as well. So I remember years ago, I read this book, and the title of it was written by a doctor, and they said, what would Jesus eat? Okay, think about that. Um, I believe the Mediterranean diet is also the diet of the Bible. Because what did Jesus feed 5,000? Fish and barley loaves, right? Um, so you're going to see that those are components, those are popular, but fish, especially in the Mediterranean diet. Um, so this is this will give you an idea of just uh, where did the diet originate, originate. So I'm talking, when I'm talking about Mediterranean diet, I'm talking more traditional Mediterranean diet, especially a lot of the studies about the longevity uh, benefits of the, of the Mediterranean diet really uh, were when they studied the population of this island of Crete. There's a really, these people here at the island of Crete have amazing longevity. So um, that was, um, they studied a lot of the foods and the culture of that, that, that particular island and say, what if we could adopt more of that diet and that lifestyle? You know, wouldn't we all be healthier in the Western world? Okay, so back to, back to Sicily. Okay, so this is like, I was just looking, I think it was two or three years ago. Uh, Jim and I went on a food and culinary tour of Sicily. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, what, what, it was with an uh, organization called the Old Ways Foundation. And you're gonna hear me talk more about Old Ways Foundation. Um, Old Ways Foundation, uh, they educate the public about the Mediterranean diet. Not just the Mediterranean diet, but traditional diets from around the world. It's an amazing site. Um, and you'll want to go there, um, and I'll give you the link here. It will be on one of the slides. Uh, but Jim and I signed up for one of their tours. You can go on a food and culinary tour with Old Ways. It's open to the public, and they're amazing and they're wonderful. Uh, so not only that, I got continuing education credits for my RD credential. That mm -hmm. was great too. Mm -hmm. and, and so we went to Italy for a week, and it was so fun. They took us to the food markets. You've ever, have you been to the food markets? And the, aren't they wonderful? Aren't they just wonderful? You just go there and you drove. Um, but um, in Sicily, it was the food markets, there's so much fish. Because you know what, Sicily, it's an island. And uh, the fish was just amazing. So they took us to the food market so they could teach us about the foods of the Sicilian Mediterranean diet. And it was loaded with fish of every kind. And we ate fish three times a day until I think it was close to the last day we were there. <laughs> Jim was hungry for a steak. <laughs> he was, honestly. And so we, we found these restaurants. Okay, you know the restaurants that don't even open till like 7.30, 8 o'clock at night? So, yeah. Man, I'll tell you, for us seniors that are in bed by 9, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, that's a little late to eat. So here we are, we're, we're, we're running around Palermo trying to find a restaurant where you could get a steak and you found one. And it was a great steak. And it was from beef in Italy. That was really great, right? So local beef in Italy. But anyway, so lots of fish. Fish markets were amazing. I'd never even seen some of this fish or heard of it. Um, you know, really cool, right? Look at all that. Um, flounder. Flounder, thank you. I should know that. Mullets, maybe. Um, and then we had the fish market. There was a, you know, <laughs> um, the, I can't remember the fish market. That was there. Anyway, he sang to us, which was a little benefit. The produce was like bright, brilliant colors, right? Just fresh, fresh, fresh. So that's the one thing that you realize with Mediterranean diet. If you just think fresh, more fresh. Foods, um, that's really the main thing. Not like, you know, the American diet, we're pretty processed with our food culture here, but people are getting better. I really feel there's a great movement, uh, you know, back to natural foods and uh, especially, I just thought that the, the produce was just amazing. Everything grows big, it's big, like the serpentine, um, zucchini, um, everything is so fresh. Look at that, just gorgeous produce. Mm -hmm. Huge, I can't believe how large and huge they grow. The citrus was amazing. We had fresh blood orange juice in the morning. So that was great. Um, 
And we were there during strawberry season. So it's all the fresh strawberries. Oh, it was great. Olives, of course, nuts and seeds of all kinds. Now, our health department might have a little challenge with some of this, but um, nobody was around, um, you know, nobody was too concerned about that. Uh, risotto, look at that, and all the various, I can't read Italian very well, but there's just some dried uh, veggies and uh, herbs and spices of all kinds. It was, that's another thing of the Mediterranean diet. They really do emphasize fresh herbs and spices, uh, another um, component of their diet you know, more nuts of all kinds and olive oil. So that's kind of a little bit, a quick tour of the food markets. This is 2001, and so I needed something because I knew this is what I wanted to feed my patients was a Mediterranean diet, right? More this. Um, so because I was out of cardiovascular hospital, um, I thought, okay, I'll use this heart puzzle concept uh, with the pieces of the, you know, the diet, you know, bigger pieces, emphasizing what's important. So uh, what I did was I knew that it was going to be difficult to get my farmers to eat a Mediterranean diet because, you know, Midwesterners so from South Dakota, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, you know, and 70% of the patients are from those areas, right? So this is rural farming. So I called it Prairie Mediterranean and incorporated some lean beef, pork, skinless chicken into the diet as more of a complement to the diet and getting them to think as the center of their plate should be these fresh wholesome foods, right? Fruits, vegetables, whole grains. And then I use a little bit of a nutrient-based approach then with the other foods, trying to emphasize why do you want to eat these foods, why would you want to eat these, and so forth, and how this can help with reducing cardiovascular disease. Um, now, I would do, this is 20, no, we're 20 years later, the science and nutrition has changed significantly. Um, uh, canola oil, I'm not so much a big fan of, because now that we have avocado oil, I think that's a much better choice. Um, you know, and it's just like soy protein, you have to be careful, you want to eat more whole soy, not all that processed soy food out there. Uh, so, but, but pretty much most of it still fits with the science. It's still, it's still pretty appropriate, uh, to, you know, as far as an eating guide. Um, and again, the reason why I did, because remember, the Mediterranean diet, remember I was showing that, you know, that, that chart with all those different countries. And so there's variation within those countries, again, depending on what's available, right? Because it's like here in the United States, you can't go down to the local fish market for those part. Yeah, you're, so here, where do we go for the local fish market, the fresh fish market? There's one, right? Mm -mm, you know. So, you know, you have to be able to, when you're thinking about this and for population, for eating, helping people eat healthy, think about what's available locally. And that's really kind of what we, uh, what, what I tried to do with this, you know. Um, and of course, I tried to include all the local healthy farm foods. But this came out, this was from Old Ways. Again, it's a foundation that teaches about uh, Mediterranean diet and traditional diets from around the world, trying to get people to get back to their traditional ways of eating. So that's what I think about with um, my prairie Mediterranean diet is, you know, um, getting back to the way we ate when I was on the farm. Uh, so it has, starts out, I really like this pyramid uh, for the traditional Mediterranean diet. It's excellent, excellent, because it starts out at the bottom you know, with every day be physically active, enjoy meals with others. That's one thing I like about being in this community. We get a lot of that, don't we? <laughs> enjoy meals, maybe too much of that. <laughs> uh, it's hard, you know, sometimes, you know, control the weight because, you know, social media is so fun. It's just a wonderful living here. It's so enriching to live in this community. But that's so important over there. You know, meals are leisurely, you know, last two hours, so enjoyable. Um, and then they kind of lumped a whole bunch of foods in the next level up. Vegetables, fruits, whole wheat, grains, olive oil, beans, nuts, legumes, and seeds, and herbs and spices. Oh, that one big lump here. Fish and seafood is its own special little category. Weekly and moderate portions, poultry, eggs, cheese, yogurt, and of course, sweets and meats at the top. Of course, sweets and meats, sweets, I found they like their sweets over there, especially in Sicily. <laughs> so, um, 
but you didn't see we didn't see a lot of meat there but uh, it's, it's it's round oh and of course aha uh -huh. yes can't can't leave that one out right especially a little wine with meals okay so here's another concept in nutrition is that nutrients in your food work in synergy you know what synergy is it's like you know you one plus one equals five because of the synergy of the combination so um they don't nutrients don't work by themselves individually i mean you want to think of nutrition as a a concept of this is the best one i should think of a hundred piece orchestra because you need about a hundred nutrients to stay healthy and that includes all of your trace minerals there's about 30 of those so overall you have about a hundred various nutrients that are essential for you to be healthy so um, this is why you want to think about eating broadly in a variety so you can get those hundred nutrients in um, so if you eliminate if you eliminate let's say a whole category of foods from your diet it would be like eliminating the clarinet section in the orchestra right because if you start eliminating the clarinets or uh, clarinets oh let's get rid of the violins let's get rid of that and so when you start really kind of limiting your food intake especially foods that are nutrient dense foods in the diet you're going to be missing out on some key nutrients so um, you want think you want that that harmonious uh, orchestra, right? All those nutrients working together to produce a healthy, healthy body. Okay, so think of it that way. So you're going to hear me talk about nutrient density, and that's the emphasis that you'll hear. That is a very nutrient dense diet, right there, right? So the wine works in synergy with the food. So it's best to have your red, red, red wine with your meal at the same time, right? Uh, so that's where you're gonna get the greatest benefit. Now there's another pyramid out there. This is from Spain. It's a little more complicated. Uh, I'm going to be posting in your next class, you're gonna get a handout with this resource, but um, I'm not sure if I have, I don't think I've got the website on here. A little more complicated, um, pretty much similar concepts, you know, um, <laughs> Traditional, local, and eco-friendly foods uh, talks about okay, olive oil, bread, pasta, rice, couscous, and other cereal grains. Really emphasis on that, the cereal grains, and so forth. Uh, they include their eggs, which eggs are great, of course, um, legumes, and then of course they go up with their protein foods. Um, but pretty, fairly similar. So what about the science though? So let's move into talking about the science. So let's a little bit about the what of the Mediterranean diet. So. Here's uh, more about the why. Um, U.S. News and Real World reports every year they rank every year they rank over 40 diets, and they bring in uh, 50, 60 mm -hmm. nutrition experts, some of the top top ones in the United States, and have them rank all these diets. So, did you know that there's like 50, 60 different diets out there? You know? I have seen them. I think I've seen most of them one time or another. They're talking about different diet programs as well. They have Weight Watchers is in there as well, for example. So um, they rate all these different diets, right? Um, and so the Mediterranean diet was rated as the best diet in all these categories. So, okay, so um, more validation about the health promoting benefits of the Mediterranean diet. Best plant-based, best heart healthy. It's easy to make plant-based for people who want to be vegetarians actually. Best heart healthy diet, best for diabetes, best for healthy eating, and easiest diet to follow. How about that one? That's what we all want. Right? Something easy and simple to follow. Um, so another, uh, some more research on the Mediterranean diet. And this is why I chose the Mediterranean diet when I started Heart Hospital. Because in all those research studies, and at that time, there's probably about half of this amount. Now we've got 8,600 studies. You can go to pubmed.gov, type in Mediterranean diet, and you're gonna see a wealth of research. It's amazing and it just gets better all the time. So the benefits of the Mediterranean diet and how those nutrients, that nice finely tuned orchestra, right? How is that working inside of your body? What are the, 
the benefits to your physiology, I might call it. Um, it because the Mediterranean diet is the most potent diet out there for reducing oxidative stress and inflammation. Talk a little bit more about what is oxidative stress. And also reduces insulin resistance. Okay, these two, these two lead, these are the foundation, the root cause of most chronic diseases, oxidative stress and inflammation. Now the inflammation, you don't sense and feel these two, but most of the inflammation that does damage in your body is silent. You don't sense and feel it. I mean, you know it's inflammation if you cut your, you know, cut your hand, right? You know that's inflammatory, but you don't sense and feel it. Uh, but that's going on. Um, and insulin resistance. This is the what leads to type two diabetes. Also, can significantly increase heart disease. And what that's what it decreases uh, primarily has other benefits as well. But what does it improve? The big big thing is the gut. The improvement and the benefits for your gut. 70 to 80 percent of your immunity is in your gut. So if you really want really good immunity and immune health, you're going to want to really focus on your gut and, and gut health. Um, and it increases longevity. And you'll go read at PubMed.gov. You'll read about how the more people adopt that Mediterranean diet, uh, the greater the longevity, right? And one of the things it does is it's the most potent diet, not only at reducing oxidative stress, but activating an anti-aging protein in your body called NRF2. So it's a, it's a great diet for a lot of really great reasons as far as what's going on inside of your body. A little bit about the oxidative stress piece because this is when I was reading this. This really, I mean in 2001 was the first time that I started reading about oxidative stress and um, how damaging that was. Because all the research was saying that Free radical damage, that's what oxidative stress is. Damage to your cells by toxic molecules called free radicals. And um, I, I learned that, that that was at the root cause of heart disease. So I learned this, for example, and you might not know this, but that your cholesterol is not necessarily damaging, and it doesn't necessarily get deposited as, a, as plaque until it's oxidized. That means a pesky old free radical comes along and it damages that cholesterol particle. Well then your immune system goes, uh-oh, that seems to me like something that shouldn't be long in my, in my blood vessel. So what they do is that they, the uh, macrophages gobble up that cholesterol particle. And then what they do is then deposit it in the arterial wall. And that's how plaque starts. Plaque in your arteries start with oxidative stress. So when I was teaching my patients, I would talk to them about a cardio-protective diet. Not so much focused on just lowering the cholesterol, but we want to protect that, those blood vessels and that cholesterol from being oxidized and damaged by free radicals. So the, the free radical damage comes from our environment, a big source of it is from your environment. You might, um, you know, uh, chemicals in your food. Can you imagine you're eating this healthy food and <sighs> what else is in there, you know? Uh, so I try to eat organic as much as possible if it's available. I, there's that something called the Dirty Dozen by the Environmental Working Group. Have everybody heard of the Dirty Dozen? Mm -hmm. um, the Dirty Dozen are the top 12 fruits and vegetables that you should buy organic. Right, because it's hard to buy everything organic, but if you really want to limit chemical exposure, according to them, there's the dirty dozen that um, you'd want to buy uh, organic to reduce your potential for getting a lot of chemicals, right, in with your, your food. But a lot of different sources for those free radicals, ah, cell phones, all of our electronic devices, EMFs are a source of oxidative damage and oxidative stress, intense aerobic exercise. Um, you know, like marathon runners. I don't think any of us are in that category, are we? <laughs> Anybody have a marathon runner? Maybe. Do I have a marathon runner in here? No, that's fine. Okay, um, pollution, all of this. Uh, so the, what's going on inside of your body is that, see, when that cell gets attacked by free radicals, it's damaging that cell and it becomes unable to really function. So that's what is oxidative stress. And of course, free radical damage is linked to all of the chronic diseases of aging. So that's why I see why the Mediterranean diet is so 
effective and important, right? Because you're getting to kind of more down to root cause. You're looking at this, and so that will really help to keep you healthy in the long term from a number of chronic diseases. Remember I said it's a nerve to activation diet as well? So um, they found this is a great review article, came out by Washington State University researchers. They said that the um, Mediterranean diet is the most potent nerve to activation diet. And they said that nerve two may become the most extraordinary, therapeutic, most extraordinary preventative breakthrough in the history of medicine. So lots of reasons to want to eat Mediterranean, right? For your overall health. So what else does it do for you? Ah, we talked, I want to talk about cardiovascular disease, but it decreases the risk of some cancers, right? That's important. More effective than a low fat diet for losing weight. It protects against cognitive decline. Right. Okay, so in December, I'm going to do a, uh, a webinar, but it's going to be in the ballroom. I'm going to be doing it's called Better, Better Gut, Better Brain. So I'll be teaching about the importance of your gut for your brain health and what you can do to, to really promote a better, healthier microbiome in your gut. Um, so they improve eye health, including the decrease, decrease of the risk of macular de degeneration. The main thing is with that is the Mediterranean diet includes tons of leafy greens and parsley and, um, you know, like green foods. And that's where you get two important uh, phytonutrients called lutein and zeaxanthin. And these are very protective for your eyes. Okay? So if you want to protect your eyes, Mediterranean diet is great for that can decrease the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, and can help with managing blood pressure because of all the fruits and vegetables. Okay, so I have, well, 30 minutes. I'm doing great because I can open it up for some questions. So really, so basically in summary, is that what we talked about in this class is what is a Mediterranean diet? We talked about that. Where did it come from? Uh, what is important and what foods generally make up the Mediterranean diet and what foods should you include um, and then we talked a little bit about what is the science behind the Mediterranean diet okay uh, but I wanted to go back a little bit to uh, talk about we'll talk about the fish particularly because when I talked about that and that uh, showed you all those great slides on the beautiful fish fresh fish and you're like going wow you know, how can I get more fresh fish? Well, we for the most part don't buy fresh fish. Uh, we buy it frozen. And if you buy the wild caught frozen fish, that's probably no doubt the best. Uh, because that's even better in many cases than fresh, because here in Arizona, like in South Dakota, it's difficult to get it really fresh, right? I remember when I first started at the hospital and I was meeting with my wholesaler food supplier and I said, hey, I wanna, I'd like to have some fresh salmon on the menu. Wouldn't that be wonderful to feed my farmers fresh salmon? And uh, he said, uh, you know, I'm going to discourage you a little bit from doing that. He said, I think you should buy it frozen. He said, it's going to be fresher frozen because they now on the wild caught fish is when it's caught on those boats, they process it immediately and they flash freeze it. So in essence, he said, you're getting fresher fish in South Dakota uh, by just buying the frozen. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, so honestly, that's what I, I started getting um, my fish frozen. And so that's what we do. We buy the frozen. I love that you can go, you know, Costco's are kind of one of our favorite places where we can get that wild caught fish, why wild caught? Um, I, I think for, for sure, um, you're no doubt going to get less potentially contamination for one thing, right? When you're buying it white, called, uh, caught from cold water, uh, natural cold water bodies of water. Um, because the nutrition in the fish is going to be related to what the fish are eating. So if it's a farm fish, it's only going to be as nutrient wholesome as what they're feeding them. And sometimes you don't really know exactly what they're being fed. Um, you know, like in salmon, there's something called grill, which gives the salmon that bright red, wild caught salmon, that bright red uh, color. Um, so farm fish, sometimes that'll add artificial 
means of coloring the fish <laughs> in their feed. So you don't really know exactly you know, what they're getting. Um, so that's another reason why with buying the wild um, caught frozen fish. You know, I bought um, hokey from New Zealand, which is wild caught fish. I found that at um, Costco, mahi mahi, salmon, cod. What else is anybody else? Branzino. Uh, Branzino. Branzino. Okay, what else did you say? Halibut. Halibut? Of course, halibut. Oh, yes, of course, halibut. Yes, love halibut. Definitely. Yeah. So that's one thing uh, for, you know, as far as, you know, because that was a number of kind of my question a lot of people ask where do I get some decent fish? What I like to use for, for if you're cooking for one or two people, isn't that wonderful? They're a little individually also frozen. You pull out one or two, doesn't take any time to defrost. You know, cooking fish, if you want a quick meal, you go pull out those fillets, right? You can defrost them in some running cold water in about five to 10 minutes. And the fish doesn't require a lot of complicated preparation. Lemon juice, you know, herbs and spices on top, broil it, throw it on the grill, and you have a meal in 20 minutes, a very wholesome fresh meal and then have your sides with that. So fish is easy, easy to prepare. So that's a simple Mediterranean meal right there, right? Uh, just with some fish and a vegetable and um, maybe some you know, brown rice, some farro, which I'm gonna try, I'm gonna experiment far with farro, cooking that. That's a grain that's pretty new to many of us. Um, but anyway, so that's simple to do. Uh, so, okay. Sure. Yeah. What, what will you be covering in the next session? Okay, the next session, uh, I'm going to be talking about, uh, okay, we're going to be talking about specific, actually, uh, we'll be looking at my pantry and what's in my pantry, my freezer, and all that. So we'll be going through and um, what, going step by step. Like, what do you stock your pantry with? What do you stock in your freezer? What do you stock in the refrigerator? What do you have on hand? What kind of olive oil should you buy? What specific types of oils? All of that. We'll be going into that. We'll be talking about how to put together some menus. Um, more in depth about, we talked about that a little bit today. We got into it today. Shopping particularly, food preparation, all of that. Um, so we'll go a little more depth on that next week. But yeah, so we're gonna, it's gonna be more like a work session. You're actually gonna get into planning specific menus. Okay, so you come back, we'll have tables set up, and so you'll be able to work with other people who will sign in. Okay, so that'll be nice. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you.